I've lost about 175 pounds since I went vegan. Now, could I have done this on another diet? Probably. Uh, if you want to know the history of my kind of diet life, um, at the end of the video, I'll put a playlist just labeled diet. It kind of goes over, there's so many videos on there, but it does go over kind of my past. So check around, uh, you know, stick around for that. The one thing that I have to say is when I was eating a lot of protein, when I was trying to maintain like anywhere from one to three grams of protein per, I think it was kilogram, it was it was a lot. It was ended up being like two to 250 to 300 somewhere grams of protein a day. It was absolutely ridiculous. It shut down my liver and kidneys after uh, like basically a decade of doing it. And I couldn't do it again. I can't even have to this day, even though I'm vegan, I, you know, like the vegan protein. So like vegan protein, like say beans, I can't even have like a can of beans more than a couple days in a row without having that same smelling like ammonia, uh, you know, just stomach acid issues, uh, just basic body odor that I don't have when I don't have a lot of protein. So I still can't have a lot of protein even to this day. Nor, nor do I really miss it all that much. Because if you watch like somebody like Mike Menser, and I'm not gonna talk about bodybuilding here, but when you look at somebody like Mike Menser, who came onto the scene, and he was doing like, I think it was 75 carbohydrates, 15 protein, uh, you know, we're talking percent, and then 10, what is it, 10% fat. That was his breakdown. And technically he won the 1980 Mr. Olympia, that whole politics with Arnold Schwarzenegger is ridiculous. That was what he was using to become Mr. Olympia. So if you think that you want to build muscle and you think that you need these crazy amounts of protein, you're not. Now I realize that all of these guys are on performance enhancing drugs. I realize that they're all on something of some kind and a lot of it in, in some cases, right? So if these guys, and yes, I realize they're on stuff, but if these guys back in the day, you know, we're talking Tom Platts, uh, you know, Frank Zane was a little different, but like Mike Menser, those guys, they were all doing what Menser was doing and he was doing high carb. Like they, they were getting really tired of Arnold's way in the 70s of protein, protein, nothing but meat. And incidentally, Arnold, Arnold has actually had to have his heart literally taken out of his chest and they had to shave fat off it or something like that because he was like gonna die. And he's one of these guys that was a huge proponent of, you know, this, this huge amount of meat. And look what happened to him. So now that I'm done talking about the protein, the, the diet that I really like is high carb, low fat. Now, whether you're doing a lot of fruit, whether you're doing a lot of starch, to me, I like a lot more fruit. That's just because you don't need as much insulin to digest it. Sucrose and fructose really don't need insulin to digest. It's just glucose that needs um, insulin to digest. When I was over 400 pounds, I was like 422 was the most I ever saw myself weigh. I went on a fruitarian basically diet. Well, I went on a raw diet. I had fruit all day and at night I would have a salad. And I did have to start adding avocado into it just because of the fact that I was losing weight just too fast. There was literally days where I was losing two pounds a day. It was, it was getting scary almost. And I'm like, I can't do this. I'm gonna have a bunch of loose skin. This, this really doesn't seem ideal. I just felt like a lot of water retention and skinny fat was gonna happen. I mean, I was already fat, so I didn't wanna get that skinny fat look. So I started adding uh, avocado into it. But if you don't have a ton of weight to lose or you're not losing like a two pounds a day, I wouldn't even add the fat in. You don't really need it. But if you are losing weight way too fast, then I would highly suggest adding in a little bit of it, not a ton, don't go overboard. But, however, the number one tip that I have is if you are going to do something, do it consistently. If you're going to stay low fat, stay low fat. Whether that means that you gotta bring food with you all the time, whether it means you can't go to restaurants really anymore, it just is what it is. If you wanna be dedicated to this, you're just gonna have to be dedicated to it. It's not the greatest sometimes, but if you want the results, you're just gonna have to do the work. Now, I don't think that you need to do a ton of exercise, but the three exercises that I suggest most, and this is coming from somebody who has ankle issues, who has just 
ankle issues that most people aren't gonna have. The surgery I had has only been done on a thousand people in the entire world. So I, <laughs> I have an odd case, but I, I've always had bad ankles, feet, and, and everything. So that's gonna be coming from my perspective on what I would do, what exercises I like. And no, swimming is not one of them. A lot of people ask me about swimming. I don't really like it all that much. I do like going in the water. I just wanna chill in the water and I wanna swim. So the number one exercise that I have found over the years is the cellar sizer, the rebounder, the bouncing on a mini trampoline. Now I will link it down below, it's an affiliate link. If you don't wanna give me credit for it, don't use it, just go check it out. I've had mine since 2013 or 14. I'd have to look back at the records. It's one of those, so I've had it a long time. I'm gonna show a video of it, of me on it. And it's just been absolutely phenomenal. I, I, it, there's so many benefits, honestly, from bouncing on a trampoline that I, I couldn't give it up. I, I've, I've actually don't do the other two exercises that I'm gonna list very often, but I do cellar size daily, all right? And it's just, just because every cell in your body's getting worked out. Every cell is getting, you know, unloaded from all of its toxins. It supposedly reverses you, uh, it reverse ages you. How, how do you prove that? I don't know. I mean, the, the owner of the company, David Hall, he looks pretty good for somebody that's, I think, 67 or 68. It just is amazing. NASA's done a study on it. Now, NASA did a study on a large uh, trampoline, not on a mini rebounder. Nonetheless, it was a spring trampoline that they tested, so I like to use a spring trampoline. I have made videos about my idea between Bellicon and Cellar Sizer, I will link that here. I don't wanna really get into that. Yes, I have tried a Bellicon. No, I did not like it. So that is, if I, if, even, if, even if I had to go back to my lifting days, I would add in Cellar Sizer to my routine 100%. I may not even, even gone to the gym as much or at all. <laughs> if I knew how much the gym was going to take over my life. The obsession that it, it became kind of ruined my life in, in many ways. And I think I would probably just do the cellar sizer. Okay, that's, I think that's all I really have to say about it. Just because I've made a lot of videos on rebounding, you can go check those out. Number two, and this is coming from somebody who is looking to save their ankle has feet issues, has knee issues, has back issues or whatever. And I've talked about why you would have that in other videos is riding the bike. Riding the bike is so good. If I, When I see people who are extremely overweight, not that I'm like the skinniest person on the planet, but when I'm out there and I see people who are extremely overweight trying to run, I'm like, what are you doing to yourself? Get a bike. Yes, you burn less calories. Yes. It's less, you know, it's not as effective at, you know, overall thermogenesis, but it will save your joints. And overall, you're going to be able to do way more on a bike than you are running. These people, you can hear them too. Like if I go for a walk, I don't really listen to music. I don't ever plug in uh, for the most part. Um, you can hear these people coming behind you. It's just, boo, 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 boo. You can hear their joints crying. And I'm like, buy a bike. Especially in the area that I go do this in, like these people are not hurting for money, right? Like they can afford a bike. Most of the parks I go to are in areas where the average house cost is in the millions. So you can afford a bike. I'm sorry, like I don't understand this mentality. You can hear them running towards you. And especially because they're all these hokas, I'm not gonna get into that topic. But yeah, just decided that I don't have as much ankle issues when I rebound as I do when I bike. Not that I dislike riding bike. So I just cellar size instead. Okay, that is the only reason. If I didn't have as crazy of an ankle situation as I have, I would ride bike way more than I do. And I, I would actually love to live in an area where I could ride wherever I needed to, just as a utilitarian purpose. And that way I didn't really feel the need to go ride like long miles out in the country somewhere, but I could if I wanted to, okay? So that's number two. Number three is the original format. Walking, hiking, that's it. 
It's so simple. However, most people don't walk very well. Most people walk like penguins. Most people walk extremely stiff and it's because of the shoes they're wearing. And I'm not gonna get into that. I've talked about this. Go check out Zero Shoes. They're very thin. You walk much more normally. It's probably going to not feel great in the beginning because you've been overstriding your whole life. I know when I see Europeans over here and there's a lot of them, they walk so much different than we do. They have a lot shorter walk stance. They have a lot shorter, just everything. We overstride in America and it really does not do your joints any good. I mean, if you can imagine landing like this, your knee is not supposed to be fully locked out when you're landing and that's what people do. So it shoots up the entire body. That is why it's number three, because when I see people walking out there, I'm like, this is not good for your entire body. I guarantee your back hurts all the time. And why do I know that? Because I was like them and I have a hurting back. And it, when I walk correctly, my back doesn't hurt. So I've made videos about that. I don't want to get into that in this video. So that's number three. There's not much else I can say about it. It's like, it's our original format. It's what we do when we're trying to de-stress. It's what we do when something crazy happens. It's what, I mean, even if you see somebody in an accident or something like that, usually you see them get out of their car and just start walking. It's just our natural movement, but people have put so much cushioning under their feet. We don't walk like we're supposed to anymore. So it has become kind of detrimental to the body. That is my rant on that one. <laughs> but yeah, so that, that's my top three, especially if you're somebody who lives in a colder climate or a climate that's got crazy weather and you don't really always feel like being outside or in this inclement weather, which is good for you. It's actually good to get out in that, so I'm not saying that. But if you're somebody who just doesn't, like you're spending most of your day at work and you really don't want to you know, be at work anymore or out, out anymore, Cellar Sizer is perfect for that. I think he says, why, why go, go out when you can play in or whatever. I think that's one of his uh, sayings, uh, David Hall, the creator of Cellar Sizer. Riding, and of course you can ride in, in, indoors as well if you really need to on a trainer or on rollers or whatever uh, format that you want to do that on, on, you know, you can use Zwift or whatever. And then there's walking. And of course, walking, running, you could also do that on the treadmill inside. I actually prefer the step climber. If you, if you really need to be inside and you want to walk, step climber is definitely my, my favorite. And that's my go-to or a treadmill on like, like a 12 to 15% grade at a slower pace. That is definitely beautiful. Yeah, that's it. That is, that is my message. What I would uh, do over again is consistency. That's my last message. Consistent, consistent, consistent. If you are not consistent, you're just not going to get the results. It's just, what, what thing that you do in your life, if you're not consistent with it, are you going to get better results? I can't think of anything. If you're going to be high carb, low fat, be high carb, low fat. That means no oil. That means no overt fats. If you want to add in overt fats, that's fine. You're just not going to get the same results as you would if you were just consistent. And I've proven that over this last four, a little over four months, I've lost a little over 30 pounds in this last four months being consistent. And that's it. That is uh, the message. Comments, questions down below, like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.